with Dinushki. Um, hi, Dinushki. Are you there? I'm here. Yes. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Very good, thank you. Um, so Dinushki is originally from Sri Lanka and is currently a business analyst on the BI team at Unifund and an adjunct professor at the University of Cincinnati. Um, and there she teaches microeconomics. Um, and she was awarded the 2019 Wiz of the Year by the Tableau Wannabe cost po podcast at TC19. And her Firebird visualization was even shortlisted um, in the 2019 Kanta Informi Information is Beautiful Award. And uh, I believe that's what she will talk to you uh, about today in her talk about translating music into data. Over to you. Thank you, Alex. Let me... Um, can I share this will stop? Yes. Yep. Going to share my screen here. Um, here we are. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay. Yep, all good. Just my PowerPoint slide? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you, Alex, for that introduction. Um, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining my talk today. I'm super excited to be speaking on this topic. It's something I have wanted to talk to and write about for a really long time now. I only have 20 minutes, so bear with my fast talking um, and we'll jump into it right now. So last year for the INV Feeder themed music, I created a visualization of the Firebird Suite Infernal Dance. This viz got a lot of attention last year um, and I even got to represent it in London at the Cantar Awards. So right after I posted this viz, a lot of people sent me messages and asked me a lot of questions about my design style, some of the um, technical calculations that I was using in the viz, but most frequently, the question that I was getting was, how did you make this song into data? Or how did you translate data? I mean, how do you translate this music into data? And I've told them, I've told so many people, I'm going to be writing a blog post on it. I promise it's coming really, really soon. And I'm not proud to say that one and a half years later today, I'm actually talking about it. And I've also written a blog post. So um, better late than never, right? But huge apology to the data community for that. <laughs> okay, so let's take a quick sneak peek at the Firebird biz. So um, right up, up top here is um, the story of the Russian folktale um, about the infernal dance. Um, below that, we have the orchestra layout. These are all um, custom shapes that I had to tweak the little angles to make it kind of perfectly sit in place. And then down here is the piano that um, plays or um, lights up um, every time the uh, piano note is played in this piece. And at the bottom here, we have a little bit more um, detailed analytics about the um, instrument and the notes and the whole piece. But the most important and the primary piece of information that we um, need for translating music into data is this part right here, the score. The score is um, a, the sheet of music that the conductor of the orchestra has in front of him or her. Um, and um, basically it has every single instrument that is being played every single note that the instruments are playing and when they will be playing it. So this is where, um, this is the data that, base, that we need to kind of bring this visualization to life. So how did I gather this data? Let's go. Da, da, da. Oops. So the first step to gathering this data is deciding on a song that you want to visualize. This is not a difficult step. I'm sure most of us love music. So any song that you love, um, just decide on which one you want to visualize. Step two is find a MIDI file. Now you must be wondering what the heck is a MIDI file? So a MIDI file, a MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Now, if you read that really slowly, that actually makes perfect sense for what we're trying to do today. 
Next step, you might be wondering, how do I find a MIDI file? It's simple as Googling. Um, that's how I found um, the Firebird uh, Viz song, the MIDI file for it. Just Google around. And then there are also a lot of free websites that have free MIDI files. Some of them are BeatLab Academy and um, MIDIWorld.com. Step three is in R. Now, if you have never used R, please, please, please do not be intimidated. Um, if you follow the steps that I'm about to share with you, it's going to be so, so simple. And you will, um, you will, you will really understand why I say it's simple after I show you the steps. Um, but before I jump into that, I must say that um, I cannot take credit for this, this part of the um, visual, this part of the technique. This is a hundred percent Jeff Schaefer special method that I'm using. Jeff is no stranger to the Tableau community. He has been a Zen master for several years now. And fortunately for me, I get to call him my guru and boss as well. So let's get into it. So Again, our software is uh, free to download. All you need to go, all you need to do is go to rproject.org and it'll be right there for you to download. So the three simple steps that come um, with this, with step three has six simple lines of code. And I promise you, it's super easy. So the first step is to download an R package called Tune R. To do this, you just run these two lines of code. That's it, I promise. Um, once you've download, once you've run these two lines of code, the tune R package will download on R. And this is basically where all the magic juju happens in the back end. Next step is to read the MIDI file that we have that you have downloaded. So First line of code, you bring in the MIDI file and the second line of code gets, reads it and gets the notes and the other information from it. So simple, just another two, line, another two lines of code. Next, now that we have the results, we need to bring it from R to Tableau. So what do we do? We write the results into a text file. How do you do that? Another two lines of code. Um, so basically, that's it, guys. We have already, with these six lines of code, we have translated music into data. It might have looked a um, little bit more intimidating from the viz, but it's really not. That's it. Next is step four, import data into Tableau, bring the text files in, um, join the two text files. There will be two files I'll show you soon, and then you start vizzing. The end. Okay, so now that sounded really easy and way to, um, you know, show and tell. So let's um, do it together. Oh no, not no questions yet. <laughs> so our first step is to find a MIDI file. Oh well, first step is to decide on a song that we like. I have decided to visualize. Um, the song Carol of the Bells by the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. And the second step is to find a MIDI file. If I was here, if I was going to stay here and find a MIDI file, it would take a long time and I don't want to um, make Alex and Emily mad. So um, I have gone ahead and created, um, I've gone ahead and found and downloaded a MIDI file. So let's quickly take a listen to what it's gonna sound like, or what it sounds like. Can you hear the sound, Alex? I'm not sure. Or oh, Emily? Yes, not we can. Sure. You can? Yes. OK, perfect. Um, OK, so and then it kind of gets a little crazy in the middle. So that's the song that we're going to visualize today. Oh, we're going to um, translate this music into data. So our third step is going to be in R. So let's quickly jump into R. So step number one in R is to download the package R, tune R. So to do that, we're just gonna simply run these two lines of code. 
And sometimes when you download packages, you get you know, red text saying warning messages, this is not right, but don't be intimidated by that. Typically they're just warning messages and um, usually the library downloads super fast. Next step is to read our MIDI file into R. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna create this variable called snap and we're going to um, read MIDI. Um, of course, um, for whatever song you guys pick, you will just substitute your um, location of your MIDI file to this spot. But my MIDI file is in my desktop, in my Tableau Fringe Festival folder, in my MIDI, in the MIDI folder, in that folder. And then this is the name of the song. Next step is to read the notes out of that, out of the first variable where we read the song. So now we have, so running these two code, all you have to do is um, highlight the two and then just hit run, depending on how, um, how lengthy and intricate your song is, it might take a little bit more time. Um, and then it's done. You have, you have translated music into data by just running those four lines. Now we have the results show up right here, but we need to bring it into Tableau and we need to um, be able to visualize it. So how do we do that? We write um, our results into a table. Um, now, so just write table and then your first variable and then you um, decide on where you want to um, put your, the output, which will be a text file. I'm going to put it in my desktop. Uh, folder would be the Fringe Festival folder, and then I'm going to name it COB1 because it's Carol of the Bells. Um, and then the next line of code is going to read our second variable, which is snap2. And I'm again going to put it in my TFF folder and call it Carol of the Bells2. Now you might be wondering, what is this um, bit of the code? This bit of the code um, are typically when um, they output results, they have an index column. And um, in our case, it kind of throws off all the columns and it makes it a lot more confusing than it really is. So um, writing this, these two bits of uh, code actually eliminate that um, index line. So if you run it without the, if you, if you run these two and you eliminate the index sign, our results are going to nicely fall into place and the columns and the rows um, will be so much easier to read. Okay, so again, you just highlight the two um, lines of code and you hit run. So now everything has run perfectly well. Um, a couple of errors, but um, no worries, I just ran it again. Just keep running it until it works, I guess. <laughs> um, and then um, I've written the table into my folder. So let's go see if the table came, was in the folder. So here is my Fringe Festival folder. And here are the two text files that we just wrote from R. So let's quickly look at them. The first text file has variables like time, event, type, and just a lot of different information. But the one piece of information that we are going to use from this, from this text file is parameter meta system. Now that sounds crazy, but it's actually just, um, just but this variable actually has the instrument name in it. Now, if you look at it, you're gonna be like, what, what? I can't even see it. But that's because there's a little bit of noise in this particular um, file. But if you look here, it says piccolos. So we know that somewhere in the craziness, the name of the instruments actually do exist. And I'll show you exactly how we're gonna find that out. The next text file, I hope I'm not talking too fast. Uh, the next step, uh, text file has a lot of the information that you're actually gonna to use to visualize. So you have time, you have length, you have track. Track is um, the also the instrument, but we don't exactly have the instrument name, it's just a number. Um, then we have notes, we have note name, and we have the velocity of the note. So a lot of really fun information that we can visualize. So what else are we waiting for? Let's jump into Tableau. 
Let's close this. Okay. So bringing your data into Tableau, again, is super easy. You just a new data source and you're going to pick text file and you're going to find your file and drag it, drag it in. I dragged in um, the second text file first because that's my primary data source. And then I do a left join um, with the first text file. Now this is where it gets a little tricky, but really no big deal. We're going to left join it on track, which, I, which if you remember was the um, instrument, but in numbers. And we're going to join it to the first text file um, field that was called parameter meta system. But the fun part here is we can take out all that noise right here in this join. So just going to write a calculation saying, if that field is not equal to null or not equal to NA, then we're going to use it. So you're going to take out all that null NA noise out right here. OK, and now we have a beautiful set of fields that we can visualize with. So if we start here, I have put the um, instrument name on um, rows. I put the note, note on rows and the time on columns. And now you have every single instrument um, that the orchestra is playing and every single note at, at the right time that it plays in. So um, I, I would love to sit here and visualize this whole thing with you, but because I'm uh, short in time and I only have 20 minutes, I cheated and I kind of um, fast forwarded uh, the process to create a visualization that could look like this. Um, so here is the, here is the um, score that we just pretty much created. And um, I've created, um, I've created, a, um, forgive me all, like all the boxes here because I'm on desktop, but I've created a, a Christmas tree right here, which is built of every single note um, in this piece. Um, and then I've written a calculation that if the um, notes are played within this, within this band, then the, um, ornaments or the sparkles on the tree will light up. Now, a little uh, fun calc a little fun trick with this band. One side of the band is a reference line and the other side of the band is connected to this, um, to this um, parameter. And as the parameter moves, the band will move. So as we play through, the band is moving, the notes are playing, the instruments are playing and the Christmas tree is lighting up according to the different notes that are being played. And if you look at the bottom, I have included this little piano that also um, plays uh, with the song. Now, uh, I definitely didn't have time to overlay the recording of the song with the music, um, but Hopefully we can get to that soon, but a little sneak peek of what this could look like um, is here, which is my Firebird Viz, where it's actually animated and you can actually um, make that Christmas tree look like this. I'm gonna fast forward to the end because that's the fun part. If Thank you. If you have any questions, I'm happy to take them now. Thank you so much for that. Um, you, you made it look really easy. Um, and it you, is. You, 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 yeah, you said a few times it really is. And um, I mean, you showed it on the desktop. Um, but I think the big, big thing that everybody surprised was like getting the idea and just just considering that that's possible and actually creating it, um, which I think like I find it amazing and like looking at the chat, 
pretty much everybody has found it amazing as well. Um, and yeah, your visualization there with the tree, I think that's a, that's a really nice idea. Thank you. Um, so the um, idea definitely sparked by um, my entire family can play music and they can play any instrument except me. I'm kind of the black sheep there. So I think um, being like in a very musical family, the idea is part of this orchestra and why can't I create um, the, the orchestra to play on Tableau? And of course, a lot of, lot of support and help from my team at work is what made this whole thing come to life. Very cool. Um, we have time for a few questions. Um, one question is, how did you sync the tempo of the MIDI track with the play control speed of Tableau? Okay, so that's a very difficult question for me to answer because um, I'm not musical that much. So it, it so uh, for Firebird, that was also a huge kudos to Jeff Schaefer. He's the one that used Camtasia and laid over the um, music with the play control. Um, and we use play control from pages. So it was, um, so as the pages play control played, the, um, Firebird music laid over it. And I cannot tell you that that is an easy process that is very intricate and it definitely takes a little bit more time than, um, you know, just clicking play control and going through it. Well, that, I guess that's why in the end you got the, the Vizzy award and were shortlisted because it's like doing it to that level and bringing in the synchronization and the music. Um, I think that's that's the another level. We had to, we had to, it was, we had like gotten all the way to the end. So we like yeah. had to just take it there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Ojozvi um, ask about the R packages and how the, how the installation process works. Um, like if you, how you install the, or if you need to install the R package into the system first. Um, so you just install R into your system um, and then you just run those lines of code that will install the package to your program. Cool. Um, those were the questions from the community. Um, yeah, again, thank you so much for presenting, even if it took a bit longer to, to get to this point. Um, <laughs> Oh, there was one question in the chat where um, where people could get the dashboard. I assume it's the dashboard. Oh, I'm actually not sure if that's the the original one or the one with the Christmas tree. Um, so maybe if you if you can put a link to your Tableau Public profile in the chat afterwards, and then people can go there to um, to check it out. For Happy themselves. to that the um, Christmas biz is not published yet. I am hoping to finish it today and publish it. I will definitely tweet about it as soon as it's done. Yeah, no, no pressure. <laughs> Thanks for Great. having me. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye. Um, we have...